vocal points. We need a drop for that as well, you know? Let's yeah. get that going right there. Yes, focal points where we discuss a topic that's near and dear to the four all nerds fan fam out there. Thank you once again. And tonight, what are we talking about, Tatiana? Tonight we discuss, today we discuss, depending on who you're reading, <laughs> do fan theories help or harm the experience? And by the experience, we mean the entertainment experience. We mean the movie going experience, the TV show watching experience, the comic book reading experience, or whatever it is. Do the rampant fan theories that are incessantly cropping up whenever anything happens or anything comes out for a new show, movie. For example, when you get to a new trailer for a movie, a particularly highly anticipated movies, you get, including from For All Nerds, you get this arrow of either laughs or tear, tears when it comes to the different theories about who's going to be in the movie and what is the movie going to be about and did these two blocks in the sky form you know Ultron or you know like all these weird things that people come up with including us and I have to throw ourselves in there because that's part of what we do right in mm -hmm. some ways it's part of the fun um, and I actually love fan theories I love like all of the outrageous and ridiculous things that come out because I just find it absolutely humorous. And sometimes I'm like, bro, you're doing too much. You're dragging it. We're getting a little off the deep end. What do you think, Ben? Well, sometimes we've been told we're doing too much. Mm -hmm. And right now, everyone is talking about Doctor Strange, the Multiverse of Madness, M-O-M. And there's a lot of doing too much, you know, going on. I mean, actually, right now, you know, the Super Bowl just popped off. We're going to be talking about Doctor Strange. And it was like there was a couple of trailers. There was Nope. There was Doctor Strange. There was Moon Knight. As always with any Marvel trailer, there is just a ton of speculation. And this Doctor Strange trailer invited a ton of speculation. So people are going off the chain about this right now. We're going to dive all into that, but that is the big question. And this is something that I've wrestled with for years, Chris. I used to be like, yo, don't tell me nothing. I don't want to know nothing. I don't want to hear anything. You know? Yeah. But I know some people who don't watch trailers even, and that's kind of like bugged out to me. Like, they you don't even watch the trailer. But then I'm like, well, yo, that, that must be an ill experience going into the theater and having seen right. nothing from it. Well, I thought you've done that before for certain movies where you've purposely did not watch a trailer because for, for multiple reasons, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes some trailers give away everything right yep. in the 30, to 30 seconds to two minutes of the trailer. And it's like, you don't want that hindering your, your thoughts. And mm -hmm. I, I understand that concept of just not watching the trailers and just going in just, just with relativity as little information as possible. Because to me, part of the, the consumption of entertainment and stuff depending on what it is, is about your letting your imagination go. And and whatever you imagine, that to me, like one of the best feelings is like when you're thinking one thing and it totally swerves on you, but in a good way. Mm -hmm. I don't mean like an M. Not Shyamalan type swerve. I mean like when it's just like, all right, I thought so-and-so is going to show up and it's like, oh shit, wow, okay. So a swerve for me, for example, I knew uh, using Spider-Man, for example, No Way Home, uh, uh, or Far From Home rather, like I knew... Um, wait, was this No Way Home or Far From Home? No Everything. Way Home. Thank you, No Way Home. I I knew like certain people were going to cameo in the film. I knew all these random villains from all across the Spider-Man universes were going to show up. I knew um, a little bit that, you know, the Spideys were all going to be there. Um, they said that certain other people would show up. When Matt Murdock showed up, I knew he was coming, but I didn't know he was coming like that. Mm -hmm. You understand? And that's, and, yep. and that's because I purposely didn't overindulge in what people were saying online or watching things that people were putting together on the YouTubes or this and that. So I understand people who were like, you know what? I'm not even doing it. I'm not sullying my experience because I, I want to allow myself to be surprised. A lot of people like surprises. I do. I like good surprises. I do too. And there, like you said, for certain movies, I have cut myself off. Like after maybe the first two trailers, I think, or even the first trailer for Infinity War, and in game, I definitely stopped watching things. I would not watch anything when the commercials came on. I'd be like, ah, I'm not hearing that. But for, you know, lately I've kind of leaned the other way for the most part. For Far From Home, I watched most of the trailers. I mean, No Way Home, I watched most of the trailers. For Doctor Strange, I've now seen both of the trailers. I've seen 
and read a lot of breakdown on Doctor Strange that is speculation, some plot leads, some like reviews of people who claim to have seen it. I stopped myself on a lot of those when I'm like, okay, I don't want to know too much. I was even watching a review of the trailer today and I stopped myself on that because I was yeah. like, yo, this dude might be getting things right. And I don't want to know, yeah. you know, all the general <laughs> plot of the movie. It, you know, I just want right. to know. But it it just it's one of those weird things because certain things like, you know, like you said, knowing Matt Murdock was in it did not bother me. Knowing the uh, Spider-Man were in it did not really bother me because I didn't know how they were going to be in it. Right. So when they showed up, I was still like, oh, shit. You, you were still excited. And that's what I don't want ruined and why mm -hmm. to that point, like, I'm going to watch the trailers. Like, I will talk about what I see in the trailers, but I'm going to always add a very generous grain of salt, <laughs> lots of salt to it, salt-based salt to it if I have to. And I'm going to avoid people who are really like, um, and I don't know if we're going to ever go back to doing that, but people who are like super breaking down every frame of the trailer, I'm, I'm seeing myself avoiding things like that because it's just like, I don't, I don't want to ruin the experience for me either. Like I mm. want that, the, the, the payoff that can happen when you allow, you make yourself not know everything or you don't try to whittle down every single piece of a trailer or a little type of information to its very molecular essence. Like to me, it's like once you do all that, you've squeezed all the juice out of it. And then when it happens on screen, like do you get satisfaction by saying, yep, I saw that? Or you're sitting there like, damn, everything I said came true. Oh, wow. Like, understand? Like I just, and also like another reason, cause like you and I, when we do our speculations, yep. it's like our hit rate's pretty high. Yes. So, you know, like we, we, we go to a degree, but we don't get, like I said, we're not fucking chopping it down to the quantum realm level of information where at that point it just becomes unenjoyable once or if it becomes true. Some would argue that we do. Maybe. It, okay. It, especially on our review shows. And like you said, we definitely seem to hit a lot of things. But yeah. that's once we've gotten into a show and we're on right. the fourth or fifth episode and yeah. plot lines are just going away where that's it wouldn't different. make... Yeah, it wouldn't make sense for them not to go that way because then you would have a bad storytelling and we trust these people to have good storytelling skills by that point. So we're like, this is where it's probably going just because yeah. this is what the story is saying is doing. And that's different. We're analyzing mm -hmm. an active story that everyone's in the middle of, as including us. We're The stuff we're talking about for today's show is like, a trailer before mm. anything yes. pops up, before anything is confirmed, before anything is official. These are This is literally speculation versus reality at this point. And that's when, like I said, it's like, ah, you know, that's where I feel like that's where, that's where the gap begins about who's going into the deep end with this and who's just stopping just short. Mm. Like I say, some people have said we've gone into the deep end sometimes. I feel sometimes we have gone into the deep end. Yeah. Sometimes we go in into the, the deep end in jest. And, you know, just yeah. to make some jokes and we, they might go over people's do heads. That. Yeah. We're getting these jokes off no matter what. No matter <laughs> what. Now, like we said, the Doctor Strange trailer did drop. And there's been a ton of speculation about it. <laughs> I know that, I... yeah, the fan fan want to hear our thoughts on it, how we felt about it. I'm, you know, we are already we hyped like how we felt about it. Yeah. yeah. That that we're goes hype. without saying. We're hype. This is Marvel. We're hype. You know, we're in on it. Views from the six one six. You know how we do. We're all the way in on it. Now, as far as like what's going on in it, what's happening, I don't. I don't know. You know, like I don't know any more than most <laughs> people know. know. Like this is my third day out here. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've 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 watched it. You know, a few times. I've watched some breakdowns on it. There's a lot going on, and it's still a lot of speculation and fan mm -hmm. theories, and that's what it really bugs my mind. Like right now, people are just going off. They're like, uh, "Strange Supremes in this? You saw what if? You ain't seen what if? You ain't watched what if? You don't know Strange Supreme up in here?" And well, I'm like, "I first, there's, there's not... merit to those yells, <laughs> to those shouts. There's some merit there, just yes. off of a context clue basis." There is yes. absolute merit to watching What If. Just like there's merit to making sure you watch every single Marvel MCU movie that's come out. There's going to be merits that come out of all of it. The more you know, right? With the star yes. floating across the sky. Yes. Um, 
Is it absolutely required? No. And that's the beauty of a Kevin Feige's MCU. There, you don't necessarily need to know everything. Will knowing more or everything deepen the experience for you? Color more of what's happening on the screen or the page for you? Absolutely. Absolutely. Is it absolutely required to the point where it's just like, well, if you ain't seen what's if, you might as well get the fuck out of here. Like, no. 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 And also, y'all have to remember, yes, what if is going to influence this a lot, but also... Y'all have to remember, a lot of stuff has, has been filmed, been done before certain things. Like, certain things that... When you see stuff come out of any production house or any studio or whatever, these things are not done sequentially. Some things were done years ago. Some things were done last week. Some things were done right before something come out. Some things were purposely done, you know, in certain order so that it all matched up the right way. But you, but it's not necessarily what it... That's what it is. Like... You can't necessarily find causality to say, oh, well, I saw that in water, so that means this is going to happen in mm-hmm. Dr. Strange. That may yep. not happen at all. Yes, definitely. Certain things in the trailer, like Wanda, you know, talking about, you know, I become the villain is obviously a callback to WandaVision. There is the Shuma Gorav Gargantor. What, what is my man's name again? I can never remember that damn name. Gargantos. I, I mean... Gargantos looking thing where yeah. we've seen the tentacles and you've the eye them. and yes. what if? Yes. Yes. And you also have to understand like some of that stuff is like you said is obvious references. Some of it is similar, but probably they will flip it on you and be completely different. Because if you remember, the premise of the multiverse is everything is different. There is different common. It's a Rubik's cube of people, places, and things. There is going to be a slight change on what you may know or what you remember seeing, even from what if, even though what if was just a, just a, a minute ago, there's still going to be some twists and turns and they're going to say, oh, no, that's not so and so that that's not strange to me. That's 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 strange ultra or some dumb shit like it's going to be some wild shit like that. And not for that that example specifically, but you get my point that mm-hmm. there are going to be flips and twists of what you had previously saw because that's how Marvel do. We have said that on the Views from the 616 at Views from 616 Twitter page. Whatever you think you see or or what you see in a Marvel trailer, it's all a lie. She lied, guys. She lied. (laughs) I don't know. Like, I don't know what else to tell you. Like, we learned that years ago, right? But at the same time, there's a lot of truth in these Marvel trailers. That's the yes. other thing. You know, it's so it's one of those things where you're like, damn, what what do I believe? Because as we've seen from the Spider-Man No Way Home trailers, those things weren't altered the way people thought they were altered. People were sitting there like, yo, that shot is going to be a different Spider-Man standing there on the bridge. And no, it was Tom Holland standing there on the bridge, you know? <laughs> it's like, that's what I mean. People acted like it was to be some whole other thing. There were definitely things taken out. But we mm-hmm. knew that going in because we knew they didn't want to show you all the Spider Men that everyone had already was like, yo, they're in here. Yeah. So, that's, with, but that's still an alteration taking yeah. things out. Oh, definitely. And right. with this Doctor Strange trailer, I think there might be things taken out or there, there might be people replacing shots. But at the same time, I don't know. I think it just might be the people we see in those shots. Colors are a big thing that Marvel lies about. Uh, if you remember from Infinity War and, and Endgame, the colors of certain stones in certain places mm-hmm. were completely changed. Lies, falsif- falsifications in your face. So, like, I also wouldn't rely on too hard on seeing certain colors or certain things, even in the trailer, because they could they can absolutely change that and flip the script on you. And and it's like, and and perhaps it's just it's in a way it's a multiverse of madness for all of us as viewers, right? What is the truth? What was the reason, right? Like, what's the truth? What's just, what's been fantasized or changed so that we get thrown off the course? And, in, and, and Go ahead. And so that we get hype over this. You know, and that's so you the thing. Get hype. And that's where we come back to the, the basis of fan theories and all this stuff. Because there's some that could be these theories based off pure, re- like, yeah, it's like, okay, this makes sense just from a logis- logic standpoint. And their stuff is just like, you're just saying this because you saw a shadow that looked like Jesus. And now all of a sudden it's this. Like, you know, like they say, oh, I saw Jesus in this piece of toast. It's like, did you really? And it just reminds me all of that stuff. Like when people say, oh, I see this and I see that. It reminds me of a Rorschach test. Like, what do you see versus what you think 
you see? Like what's what's actually there versus what is your imagination or even your personal lived experience engineering to make you see? Prime example, when you when you're sitting outside, say you're laying outside in a beautiful meadow, nice cumulus clouds in the sky, you're looking up, just feeling the breeze, and you see different shapes, animals, people, things, places in the clouds. It's going to look different to different people or Depending on if you say you're with someone, you can potentially persuade them or influence them to say, oh, I see a bird in that cloud. See the see the see the wings there. And then they go, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? You're right. It looks like a Fruity Loops bird. It's like, OK, cool, cool, cool. And that same type of approach happens with trailers. It happens with the theories where people things could just seem absolutely outrageous. But someone is just convincing enough or someone has a shared experience or Someone, you just want it to be right. You just want that to be the case. So you're like, damn, I did see Nightcrawler there. Never mm. mind, doesn't make any sense, but I did see Nightcrawler. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, <laughs> and, and, and in all of that, we also have a very strong, powerful for- force called, called plausible deniability. And that is what Kevin and friends bank on when they give us these trailers and they say xyz is happening or pretend that xyz is happening because they're going to say well we ain't say that specifically or you could say oh i saw for example ben we're going to talk about the 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 dr strange poster and what we see in there there are some things that are obviously like yeah that's what it is and there's some things that it looks like depending on depending on how the light changes it could be something else plausible deniability but let's talk about that. Like, let's talk about the big things that we see or that people are saying they see <laughs> in both the Doctor Strange poster and the Doctor Strange trailer. First up, the, the two main things just to get out of the way for the Doctor Strange poster that people are saying they see are Captain Carter's shield from mm-hmm. the What If series where Peggy Carter gained the powers of the Super Soldier Serum and became Captain Carter. Mm-hmm. And our good friend Deadpool. Right. Now, I saw these images, and yeah. the Captain Carter show is actually, very, it's in 4K HD 1080p. Mm-hmm. All that stuff. You know, it's all, it's all of the, <laughs> it's all of the thing, you know. It's 8K at that point. And for, for one reason or another, it's 8K. Okay. Then, this Deadpool thing, where I'm like, to me, it's like the Jesus silhouette theory, where I'm just like, okay, y'all, this is in 8-bit font or 8-bit, you know, uh, uh, resolution. Is, are y'all sure this what it is? Now, Super when you Nintendo, put the, now when you, Sega now when you Genesis. Put the, <laughs> when you put the clear picture of Deadpool next to it, so what they say, it was Deadpool where he has his hands, you know, he's doing the shush yep. gesture. And when you put it side by side, yes, you can say that's what it is. But is this what I said? Is this the cloud shape theory where it's just like someone is just either, you know, and, and not to say that there's any negativity behind it, it's just Someone is just convincing enough or it's just like, well, you know what? That aligns to what I want to see. So, yeah, I'm going to say that's what it is. Mm. All right. Now, as far as the trailer, there's a lot in it, a lot of going on, all kind of mishmash or whatnot. But the big things that everyone has been talking about are Patrick Stewart's voice at 119 in the trailer. I already know the time. That's how many times are, you know, it's been referenced. You can't tell me otherwise. That's that nigga. We already know that. His we voice is unmistakable. There's no denying that it's Patrick Stewart's voice saying we might as well tell him the truth, which leads us to the other part of the equation. Patrick Stewart is most known in comic book realm for playing Professor X. Best this Professor man X ever. right here. Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. McAvoy was definitely dope, but yeah, I'll go with Stewart. Uh, best Professor X. Ain't no, no, this ain't no shade to yeah. McAvoy. McAvoy's cool. That's a different time. Yeah. Best Pat- Professor X ever. And the person who's always in my mind was Professor X, Patrick Stewart. Everyone. Sean Jean-Luc Picard. Everyone. So we have Patrick Stewart sitting at a table or a uh, dais with like six other cats, right? Mm-hmm. Or six of them total. There are six chairs in this There's definitely thing. six? Okay. There's definitely six. Which, which may be erased or added on when we see the movie. There we go. Which is the number of... The Illuminati, which from the comic books is a group of individuals that I'm now forming right here. Mm. That is basically like the Illuminati that everyone imagines in, you know, our world, where it's like a bunch of dudes behind the scenes. They basically retcon these characters into having influence throughout Marvel's history. A bunch of white dudes? Oh, yeah, there we go. I mean, Uh, I don't know if Namor counts as Middle Pacific Islander at this point. Yeah, I don't know yet. I don't know. 
Uh, by the way, twitch.tv slash for all nerds. Shout out to y'all in the chat. We know y'all going wild. The only way you are seeing what Ben Amin is doing with all of these characters is if you are following and subscribe to us or subscribe to us on the Twitch, twitch.tv slash for all nerds. There we go. And a quick rundown for those listening. We have Black Bolt of the Inhumans. We have your man, Iron Man, Tony Stark. We have Namor, the only one who might not be a white man, the <laughs> Submariner himself. King of Atlantis, Professor X, and Doctor Strange. Also, Reed Richards of the Fantastic Four, but I don't have a figure of him yet, so sorry. Okay. So there we go. That's the Illuminati in the comic books. Now, speculation is running rampant as to who the Illuminati will be on the M- in the MCU, or at least this variant version of the Illuminati, because there might still be another Illuminati in our mo- in the six one six. Who knows? Maybe this is happening in the six one six. We don't know. We do see the Ultron like drones, which leads to the idea that Tony Stark or a version variant of him is on this uh, Illuminati, has one of those seats. We also see someone walking in the background who looks like Baron or the Baron Mordo variant that we're probably seeing in the trailer. With the Tyler Perry wig? With the Tyler Perry wig. With the Tyler Perry Shamar Moore wig. And the Mm -hmm. sword on his back. We see that, you know, shadow, but that could easily be changed. We also see someone sitting who looks like he's wearing the old school Fantastic Four uniform when you zoom in on it. There's another one who looks like it could be Dr. Doom. Mm -hmm. It's a lot. Who knows? (laughs) And once again, these are like shadows and images. Like Tatiana said, the cloud theory. So who really knows what it is? Right. This is and so much speculation. I, I imagine Kevin and the rest of Marvel, like the, the real laughing. higher ups, fucking dying laughing at us. And like, we look like Charlie from, from Sunny in Philadelphia on the board, like pointing to all of these crisscrosses and lines and pictures and shit. And they are laughing their asses off like y'all niggas are ridiculous. Yes. The other big one coming out of the trailer is the image of whoever this fiery suited person is fighting a version of Scarlet Witch in this <laughs> thing. This goes back to my my expression of cloud theory, as we're calling it now, and Whew. why I started laughing when like the first images started coming out and people started saying who it is. So this this as you say this this fiery looking person. This person looks like they're wearing a suit or could be flying around with fire behind them or whatever the case may be. Quite literally, in the span of forty eight hours. Three to four different characters have been attributed to this image. And out of the three or four, one is a woman, one is a man, or two are men, and one could be a robot. Like, it's just okay, run out of down. control. So what I've heard, and maybe you've heard more, and maybe there's yep. even more. It's been, it's been time. I've heard first people say, oh, that's Maria Rambeau. Yep. Because this is a variant. This is, you know, the multiverse is the variant when, when Maria gets the powers instead of... Um, Monica and, and it's all some uh, uh, they said it's a whole bunch of shit instead of Carol. She means instead of Carol, and it's yep. all and, and and it's you know all this different thing. And I'm like, Lashaw- all right, they said, Lashana Lynch return, right? And they said this could be her because Lashana Lynch now she has short hair and mm-hmm. and, and and at first the character appeared to maybe present as black, so they figure, oh yeah, maybe that's it. And that's that's one frame. Then okay. when you scoot over the frame half a second later, the image morphs to a black man. <laughs> Who this black man may be, I don't know. Because people's like, well, no, that's still with Sean and short hair. And they're like, but it's clearly a more muscular, um, uh, masculine definition. Kang. Then people say, no, no, no. That's a that's an Ultron type robot because his eyes is glowing and it's just moving fast. And the rendering of the colors and the light in the trailer just throw it off. All right. Then my niggas in the street saying it's Tom Cruise. As the variant, uh, I, 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 don't know, I don't know if it's Ultimate or whatever, but the variant Tony Stark. Supreme Iron Man, I think is the name of that variant, which okay. in the comics is just a version of Tony Stark. It's not a variant. Okay. It's just him. Like, yeah. And, and that's because when you cycle two more half a seconds through, all of a sudden what was once ethnic hair becomes straight white man hair. So I'm just like, okay. <laughs> My first thought seeing the trailer was Jean Grey, you know, because it's so quick and it's so fast. And there was speculation. I'd heard this a while back that there was a big fight between Wanda and a Fox character. So I was like, the only person who can go up against her is Phoenix. 
Mm-hmm. So that was my first thought. Then I saw the slowdowns and everything, and it just became like, all right, I don't it know. It became a mess. Yes. Now, if we want to talk a quick mess, I just want to run through a list of characters who potentially could appear in Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. If you don't want to hear this, skip ahead. Yeah. But we'll, we'll give you the <laughs> time Some people don't want to think about it, but just FYI. Yeah, I'm not even going to say where or when any of that. I'm just going to run through names. All right. <laughs> Doctor Strange, obviously. Wanda Maximoff. Agatha Harkness. Doctor Strange Supreme. Mordo. Defender Strange. Balder the Brave. Christine Palmer. The Ancient One. Mr. Fantastic. Rentra. Deadpool. Loki. Sylvie. Mobius. Kane the Conqueror. Caecilius, the villain of the first Doctor Strange, because nobody remembers him. Black Bolt, Brother Voodoo, Hulk, Clea, Iron Man, Professor X, Spider Man, Captain Carter, Ghost Rider, Magneto, The Watcher, Captain Marvel, Quicksilver, Wolverine, Billy and Tommy Matsumoff, Nightcrawler, Daredevil, Captain America, <laughs> Jean Grey, Ghost Rider, <laughs> Magic, Black Widow. <laughs> I almost didn't get through it. How about this? At what point does it become <laughs> the do y'all see w- open y'all eyes and say any motherfucker that was in a comic book between inception and now could appear? When do y'all say, you know what? Fuck it. Anybody could appear. I mean that with that's where we're at with the Marvel universe, you know? And so that's why this speculation and all this is so wild to me because uh, you know, why not? It could be anyone. Why and- not? Right, and, yeah, and it's been going on for years like this. Like the like people had like the Mephisto thing is some new thing, but there's always been like uh, Beta Ray Bill to me is a big favorite of people being like, "Yo, Beta Ray Bill's in this movie, and then he's never in any of these." We want to see that nigga. We watch too many cartoons, and we want to see that nigga. I understand the pain. Yes, I fully I understand. Beta Ray Bill is one of my favorites. Throwing back the comments, he's so ill. So you know, Beta Ray ill. There you go. So, ooh, oh, ooh, nice. you like that. You got to write that down. Yeah, write that down, folks. New AKA. So, I don't know if there's much more to say about, you know, this <laughs> fan speculation. Wait, no, I do have one question or a couple questions because this is yeah. you know, a good way to wrap this up. Did spoilers or speculation ruin your experience with the following films okay. or properties? Infinity War Endgame. <sighs> Hell I would no. Say no because and and again and and that's that's the tightrope we walk, right? Yes. Because like, you remember how earlier you mentioned how we for all nerds, you know, we had wild speculations about this. And and, I was and again, wrong. it was all in fun and everyone was in on it, our listeners and ourselves. I, I think because it was just so widely with the exception of maybe one or two things, minor things. When it came to the major things, we we were completely off base. Completely. I, I, I personally just did not believe that they were going to let him get all the stones together in this movie <laughs> and snap his fingers. And I just, it I just, happened. Yeah, and then and it happened. What, happened. And that's what's so, and that's why I'm like, that's when these people, the writers and all that stuff, like they have to bank on being 50 steps ahead. Because it's like, how do you combat a people, fan base or randoms that will go through the 50 thousand different variations of what could happen and we can and we're still all wrong i know for a fact no nigga who went to that theater thought that was gonna happen because what happened when the stones was gathered and the man slapped his fingers and niggas started getting dusted everyone was dead silent Mm -hmm. it was in the silent meant shock shock meant surprise surprise meant i had no fucking clue that was about to happen the other side of that coin is that you have to create things that hold up to repeated viewings. Like people compare this with No Way Home and uh, Infinity War Endgame, and they're like, "Will No Way Home's introduction of the Spider Man hold up to Endgame's portal scene?" And I'm like, "I don't know," because I've seen Endgame's portal scene uh, dozens upon times at this time, and it gives me chills every time. You know, mm. them dudes start coming through the portals. I don't know if that should be the same feeling. I don't know. For No Way Home, I think they're both great moments, and I think they both stand on their own. But it's it just... depends on who's watching. It depends on how much you know and and, and been involved in the MCU. Because mm-hmm. if you're like me, who's been who's been watching the Spider Man? But like I said, I was in high school when the first Spider Man came out, like yep. early. So like 
to have all that backstory and then be rewarded with what we saw in in in, in No Way Home, it was it was a, an experience. Yeah, oh, it definitely was. It was no, absolutely uh, yeah. an experience. But for someone who didn't see all the movies, they may not feel that way. They're like, all right, whatever. And then oh, and then ultimately they'd say, no, the the portal scene in in, in Endgame was of higher note to them. And that's fine. But I just yep. think it's so speculative. So yeah. I'm not speculative, uh, uh, subjective. Yeah, definitely. And all this is all subjective. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, that being said, for me, no, because I was blown away by both of those films and been blown away again and again. Yeah. No Way Home, I would say the same thing because as much as I knew, I was sitting in a the theater and I was still like, all right, maybe the Spider-Men aren't in it. Maybe this. And I was like, this is still a really good movie. No. You know? I'm really enjoying this either way. So when they walked through that portal, I was like, oh, shit. You know, like, yeah. I don't want to say it ruined it for me only because I purposely started avoiding it. Like, Mm -hmm. I was like the moment someone started saying, so y'all think, and this is what about to happen. I I immediately just moved, got off the app, moved the page, whatever, because it was getting to that point. And the things people were saying, because they were true leaks, as opposed to the streets is saying, they were true leaks. So, I was like, oh, God, these people are telling me things that are going to happen. So that's way, like, if I, I knew if I went into No Way Home with no, I, with no understanding that the Spider-Men were coming out, I would have had a greater reaction to the scene when that portal opened up in the alleyway and Andrew Garfield walked through. Like, I, as soon as that happened, I was like, that's not y'all Spider-Man. That's a different Spider-Man. And it was a very, like, I'm in on the joke type situation. Did it, did it make it a, did it make a negative uh, experience for me? No. But I felt differently than if I went in having no clue. I probably would have fucking jumped out my seat hard if that happened and I had no idea to expect the other Spider-Man. I still jumped out my seat hard, dog. I was, <laughs> you don't understand. My love for Andrew Garfield, you know, in, in that Spider-Man series is something else. So I jumped out my seat. I mean, I was doing the same for Electro because he's from that shit. So, you know, I was already all the way, you know, out of it for that. Gotcha. Yeah, and I knew Electra was in that shit, you know, <laughs> confirmed. So there was no, but it didn't matter. When he showed up, I was like, yeah, they're doing it, you know. So <laughs> It's uh, happening. <laughs> yeah, it's happening. It's really happening. Okay, I think that's all we need to say about this subject on this week's episode of Focal Points on For All Nerds. 